Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Using game edges to create non-gaming applications is nothing new, but it's kind of shocking just how many applications are being created using the Godot game engine. So what we're going to do is take a look at some of the best of them. We're going to start with probably the most or least obvious answer out there, and that is Godot itself. The entire engine, the editor, the thing you interact with when you are using Godot, that is actually written using Godot. So it's built on top of the Godot engine, uses the Godot libraries, it's written in Godot. Uh, so Godot itself is a Godot application. I know that one can take a little bit to wrap your brain around, uh, but yeah, it's true. And that's probably why Godot is actually so good at creating applications because it itself is dog fooding its own stuff to create its own application. So there is a ton of uh, UI stuff in there that you wouldn't necessarily see otherwise. Uh, the next step that we're going to see on our list is Material Maker. Now I love Material Maker. Material Maker is the closest thing that we're going to get to an open source substance designer. And it is written using, um, the Godot game engine. And uh, it's uh, a neat a visual way of creating materials, basically procedural materials using graphs. Uh, I've done a number of videos on this. I've done a video on a lot of these applications actually, but Material Maker, if you're going to check out just one from this app, uh, from this list, I would probably make it Material Maker. It is such a cool application. Again, it is a way of using graphs like you see here to create complex materials uh, out of them. Uh, next up, we have pixel o -Rama. This is a free application. It's basically like a universal universal tool for doing um, pixel art stuff. So it's a pixel art editor. There's some animation features in there, etc. Again, this one is also completely free. You can export out as ping, as sprite sheets, multiple files, or an animated GIF or GIF, however you wish to say that one. Uh, it is just kind of a Swiss Army tool pixel editor written with Godot. It's actually a really cool one as well. And if you want to check it out, you can actually just go to the website. By the way, I have a link to every website we're talking about today down below. Um, you can actually run the tool directly uh, on the web. Uh, which is, again, another cool side effect of Godot, since Godot apps are written in Godot, and Godot is able to publish to multiple platforms. This is, again, the reason why we have an Android build of the Godot game engine. But you can see here the editor is built directly inside, uh, so you can run it in... Um your browser if you wish to check it out that way as well. Very cool application, highly recommend checking that one out. And I have checked this one out in the past, by the way. Uh, next up, we have a game engine that is built on top of Godot. Uh, it is a really cool voxel RPG system. So it's kind of like RPG Maker and Minecraft had a baby uh, that gets you RPG in a box. Now this is available uh, up on Steam. It's relatively inexpensive. There's a ton of tutorials on how to actually go about using it. Uh, it it's a, uh, I, again, you can tell it was made with Godot, but at the same time, it's basically an utter and absolute total conversion. And it does a ton of, like, you know, you've got pathfinding functionality. It's even got its own visual scripting language, so, and co um, conversation or dialogue system you can see right here. So if you're into creating this style of, like, isometric voxel-based games and RPG games, this implements all of the systems for you. Uh, another cool one built on top of Godot. Next up, we have Cozy Blanket. Now, this one is only available on iOS, specifically, I think, only on iPad, to be honest, uh, but it is a retopology application. You can see it, the video in action right there. So if you want to take a high polygon mesh and make it uh, a low polygon version, you literally just draw on the screen and it does the retopology for you. Uh, it's a little bit on the pricey side, but it is one of those, uh, basically a professional uh, art tool. It's a standalone art tool for doing retopology work. Um, again, directly on top of an iPad. Uh, interestingly enough, there's also an application called Uniform. Now, this is coming from the same people. And I'm assuming since uh, Sparseal, their primary work is in the Godot engine, uh, that this is also written in Godot, but I haven't confirmed it as well. This is basically taking that app one step further and bringing you a sculpting tool uh, directly inside of the iPad as well. Two interesting, um, basically, uh, production-oriented 3D softwares that are available there, uh, both pretty cool. Next up, we have this one's commercial. It's on Steam. It's about 20 bucks, I think. Uh, and this is a uh, pixel art tool. So the one thing it does is turns other images into pixel art, uh, you can see the results of it. Uh, I'm not going to play the video uh, in action there, but they keep adding more and more things. So they've got key animation, scene composition, then bones and 2D deformation. Uh, and then we got into 3D objects, and then we got into animated 3D objects, and then we added inverse kinematic animations and mesh deformations and particle systems. Uh, and now you've got shader editors, 3D bones, and then got fluids coming soon. So it started off as this 
2D pixel art power tool, and then it just kept adding more and more functionality in there. So you've got animation tools and all that. And this one, you can probably tell from the uh, the image here, is built on Godot as well. My only real beef against Pixel Over, to be honest, is I hate the font they chose for their UI. That's that's a small beef, uh, but you can see all of the functionality that it supports here. And again, yeah, it's like 20 bucks right now on sale uh, for uh, it's on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, so if you are working with Pixel Art, this guy is a power tool that keeps getting more and more capabilities. Pretty staggering what this guy can do at this point in time. Next up, we have the mirror. Now, I haven't actually used the mirror on the channel yet. I've covered it when it was first announced. Um, this one is actually like a game engine slash Roblox type thing uh, that is being built on top of the Godot game engine. They're contributing a lot of their work back to the Godot project, apparently. Um, it's one of those things that uh, I need to, to check out in more depth at the future. Uh, it's another, it's a basically a game ecosystem and engine that is built on top of the Godot engine. Uh, it's one definitely worth keeping an eye on, um, and it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux as well. Let me know if you're interested in me doing um, a uh, mirror hands-on as it gets uh, more and more mature. Uh, next up, we have Arrow. This is a tool for creating uh, narratives in like doing text adventures or you know your game has dialogues, branching dialogues, and so on. Uh, you can use Arrow to go ahead and create them. It is completely free. All the development is visual, as you can see right here. Uh, extensible node systems, VCS friendly, uh, and so on. I actually think I did a video about Arrow, so if you want to check that out, do check that video out there. But if this is the kind of thing that you are doing in your game, uh, again, written with Godot. Uh, next up, we have Union Bytes Painter. So this is a pixel art design tool. It was written with Godot using C Sharp. Um, it's kind of like a substance painter. It allows you to do 2D sprites and textures, normal height, map, roughness, metallic, uh, directly on top of 3D objects. Um, it is commercial software, but there is a free demo available. It's available for Windows and Linux. Does not appear to be a Mac build out there. Uh, so it's not a substitute for Substance Painter or Blender. It's not suitable for high resolution texture, so it's limited to 512 by 512. But if you want to do pixel painting in 2D and 3D space, you could do so right there. Physically based rendered texture maps, layer support in there, multi-channel editing in real time, real time preview in the Godot engine. Obviously, since it was written with Godot, it's going to work well in Godot. Uh, normal map generation, uh, review post-processing, uh, texture filters, texture baking, stamping, UV editing, and tools. So if you want to paint directly on an object and you're working with kind of uh, again, that 512 by 512 type resolution image. That's what Union Bytes is all about. Next up, we have God SVG. Now, this is an open source project, very much under active development. So, last update was two hours ago. This is an SVG editor, uh, and it's very so you can view an SVG file. So that's a SVG is vector graphics, something vector graphics, what the S stands for. Basically, a common uh, vector graphics format out there. Um, and you can scalable, scalable vector graphics, I believe. Uh, so anyways, you can see the preview of the SVG over here, and you can do uh, busier curve edits or whatever, but the key thing here is uh, SVG is basically um, an XML type format, and you can do raw editing, and you've got special editors available for over here. So if you wanna create SVGs, but you wanna do it at a very um, computational or low level, that is what God SVG is all about. Again, another free and open source project under the MIT license, and again, built on top of Godot. And then we got two pieces of kind of specialty commercial software. The first one is Dungeon Craft. So if you are creating maps for RPG style games, Dungeon Craft is that kind of thing. Again, this was written on top of Godot. Uh, so unintimidating UI, clean and appealing art style, intuitive tools and fast workflow. You can actually see some of it in action right here. So let's just mute the sound so we don't get in trouble there. And let's fast forward to where we get to some, so here you can see some workflow and how it all works together. So again, if you are creating a tabletop RPGs and you need to create buildings, etc., cetera, uh, that is what this is all about. You could export it out into a variety of different formats. So I guess if you are creating a, a game, like a digital game, this could potentially work as well. But this is designed around the whole idea of, you know, creating tabletop maps for RPG games. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty polished in how it does it. This one, again, was written using the Godot game engine. They also did Wonder Draft. This is for making outside world maps. You can see sort of the same effect here. Whoa. So this one is more for the external maps. Let's fast forward, see the base port here. Really pretty software, very intuitive interface is going on as well. So if you need to create um, 
you know, illustrations for a book or again, tabletop RPG, that kind of thing. Uh, that is what these two programs are all about. Obviously, they are both commercial software. Uh, and you're looking like 30 bucks. So not outrageously expensive there. Next up, we have Lorian. This is an infinite canvas drawing note taping app that focuses on performance, small save files, and simplicity. Pretty simple. You want to create notes, draw notes, have this infinite scrolling canvas in which to do these notes. It's available right there. It is a work in progress. Uh, it is getting updates, so the last was last week, so I've went ahead and covered it at this point in time. I have never personally used it, uh, but if you need a note-taking application, this can actually export as SVG. Hey, you got good parity going on here. Uh, so, and downloads are available. It's been translated to a number of different languages, and as you can see, it was written in 99.7% GD script. So this one is another Godot project. And then finally, we have Heavy Paint. And Heavy Paint is kind of like... Um, uh, what is it? Not fractal. Um, Corel Painter, kind of that natural media heavy paint application. Once again, written with the Godot engine. And if you want to go ahead and check it out, you can check out a new version, the heavy paint web uh, available right here. And you can actually paint directly in it. I might have some issue going on here, but we'll move on from there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my feature set. These are all applications that were written using the Godot game engine. Uh, some interesting commercial software in there, some really cool open source tools to check out, a couple of game engines to check out as well. Again, one of those things about the Godot game engine, Godot is written on top of Godot, has its own UI libraries and all that stuff. So it is well fit towards making these applications. Now, of course, if I missed an application that you think should be on this list, let me know it in the comments down below. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, probably about a dozen applications written using the Godot game engine. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later, and goodbye.